Last time on channel 2012, we uh, took a look at installing uh, Windows 7 on this uh, Motion Computing C5 tablet. Now that I've been running it for a few months here, I've uh, finally put together a video here including uh, observations and uh, basically everything you need to know about the Motion Computing C5 tablet. So I bought a couple of these uh, tablets locally uh, a number of months ago, mainly because I just wanted to experience uh, how Windows would run on one, especially a uh, slate style like this. It's a very unique uh, form factor. There's no keyboard or anything, it's just, you know, the unit as it is. I needed a smaller computer than what I had that would have a little bit better battery life as sort of a secondary machine so I bought a couple of these on a really good discount and this is what came of it. First we'll take a quick hardware tour. It's this pretty light 10 inch screen on the front you got some uh, hardware keys here inside it's got a 1.1 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo 2 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM an 80 gigabyte iPod hard drive and run-of-the-mill Intel GMA 950 graphics. Anyway, let's move into the hardware tour here. On top, as you can see, you know, you got a you actually have a handle with which you can carry it around. Up here, you got a few hardware keys. This is the function key. Uh, this is kind of a second function button. Then you got A and B, up, down, left, right, and enter. You also have uh, indicators for uh, power and battery. Uh, Wi-Fi wireless as well as Bluetooth which it has built in. On the back you got uh, you got a storage area here for the stylus as well as a, a lanyard with it. The lanyard is removable. Toward the bottom here you just kind of have a uh, general information tag. Over here we got the battery. The battery is removable. We'll go over that a little bit later here. Up here is the uh, cooling area which you can actually remove the cover for. As you can see here, fan and uh, heat sink underneath, and even replace that fan if necessary. This is supposed to be a relatively uh, rugged, durable, uh, even to some degree splash proof laptop, although I don't know how well this particular uh, aspect of that bodes for the water resistance. Uh, on the left side, you got pretty much nothing. On the top, you got not a whole lot of stuff going on. There are shortcut keys here uh, to the application that will help you with the uh, barcode reader and for RFID reader. On the bottom here, you got um, the, the dock and mount area for the docking station, which it comes with. More on that in a little bit here. And then on the right side, you got, uh, this is the blanking plate for if this were equipped with the uh, barcode scanner, the barcode scanner would be here instead of the blanking plate. Power button, uh, authentic fingerprint scanner, uh, control alt delete shortcut key, uh, shortcut key to access the camera, and the uh, RFID reading area. One more thing I forgot to address on the back is that there is a uh, small, I believe it's a 2 megapixel camera with a weak LED flash, and also a speaker back here, uh, kind of behind this membrane, as part of the whole uh, water resistance thing. The idea here is that you can just uh, spray down the front of it with uh, window cleaner or something, you know, to disinfect it and clean it up uh, without risking uh, fluids getting inside of it. Also on the side here there is a, a covered port here for the AC adapter connector. This unit does not have any other uh, external connectivity ports aside from that. Uh, there's no headphone jack, no USB ports, or anything like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and boot it up. Press the button here on the side. And before it starts, I'll show you all the uh, bio screen. Because with this uh, big, uh, actually touch friendly uh, BIOS, you can poke the screen and get uh, menu options. We got a button here to continue booting, uh, system information. This gives you kind of basic information about the machine. Patent information uh, you got a calibration option here uh, for the stylus. 
password options, select boot device, and launch system setup. Now the setup itself looks like a pretty uh, typical computer setup, but it too is actually uh, touch friendly. And then you can actually uh, use the stylus to navigate around through here. So I can go in and uh, enable or disable the wireless LAN. You can also use the arrow keys on the machine itself if you don't want to use the touch screen. I'd imagine you can also use a USB connected keyboard. It does support uh, USB booting. Nothing too uh, exciting going on in here. So we'll go ahead and let it boot. Now a few things to note with this. Uh, it does hang around on the bio screen for a very long time. And I'll leave the video uncut here so you can see how long it takes. Uh, but while my other computers uh, only spend a second or two on the splash screen, this one spends a uh, considerable amount of time there. And as you can see, uh, it's now going to proceed to boot uh, Windows 7. When I got these, I opted to do a clean installation uh, on the one that I sold. I did a uh, clean installation of XP, and on this one I did uh, Windows 7, because it seems like the best uh, OS for a tablet right now. Uh, Windows 8 is just too ugly, and I don't like looking at ugly things while I uh, use the computer. Now this... Uh, the iPod hard drive that's inside of these does kind of uh, impede the uh, speed of the boot process. It does take a little bit longer, and I'll kind of show the benchmark numbers in the Windows Experience Index after it starts up to kind of give you all an idea. Uh, but it does take a little bit of a performance hit. On the plus side, those iPod hard drives are very small and very quiet. So as a result, the computer is uh, very quiet. It's almost as quiet as if you had like a solid state drive in there. Um, you really can't even hear the iPod drive unless you really put your face right up to the computer. The lower clocked uh, Core 2 Duo processor that's inside there also runs very cool. And uh, the fan is uh, very passive and quite quiet as well. So, it, uh, so that isn't very loud either. Now it is taking a little bit longer than usual here to start up because I had it install a bunch of the Windows updates. The amount of time it takes to boot up versus a normal hard drive isn't that bad. I mean it's usable. What you just saw here was an example of it taking a little bit longer than usual just because of the Windows updates. While we're waiting for it to do this, uh, we'll go over some more of the specifications here. Uh, on the front of this unit is a 10 inch uh, XGA 1024 by 768 LCD uh, screen that is enabled with a Wacom uh, touchscreen stylus system. Uh, pretty standard stuff as far as uh, tablets go nowadays. Uh, there is no uh, capacitive or resistive touch in addition to the Wacom, so the only way to activate the screen is to use the stylus, which is fine with me. And the LCD screen that's on here is actually pretty nice. I, uh, I also have a Samsung netbook that I've been hoping to replace this with, and I've been kind of playing with them side by side. And for watching video, the screen on this computer is actually a little bit better. Uh, the contrast ratio of the screen is much better, so the letterboxed video that you do see just looks uh, better and more dynamic and more fluid. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the Windows Experience Index. This unit scores a 3.2 on the Windows Experience Index. Um, that score being hampered by the graphics, obviously. It's uh, Intel uh, GMA 950 graphics, I believe. Uh, the, the little Core 2 Duo gets it a 3.6. The DDR2 RAM gives it a 4.2, primary hard disk only a 4.4. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features that make this uh, pretty unique computer here. The cool thing with one of these uh, tablets is that when you install Windows 7 with a touchscreen device on it, you find that there's all these cool uh, features in there that you didn't even know about before. A lot of stuff uh, changes to accommodate that. Even small stuff like down here in the corner, uh, the the 
show desktop box is larger. It puts a shortcut on the side here uh, to the on-screen keyboard. Of course, uh, with the Wacom stylus, it's uh, great for drawing stuff. And there's a lot of cool stylus and uh, touch-related features that you can do with this. It is a two-way uh, stylus, so the top half uh, can work as an eraser if you have it configured to do that in the software. And then uh, the, the button on the side will actually uh, let you right-click on stuff. Uh, so if I hold the button and tap the screen, that's a right click. Stylus is pretty accurate. Uh, sometimes on certain areas of the screen it's not exact, but I found that if you just, uh, when you're pointing, if you look at where the pointer is instead of where the tip of the stylus is, you'll be more accurate in where you're clicking things on the screen. Also supplied with the computer is the uh, motion computing dashboard here. This gives you uh, various options for uh, just basic display settings, sound, touch, uh, wireless. Um, you can selectively enable and disable uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And the interesting thing is, when you click these, uh, it like virtually unplugs itself from the machine. When you don't have the enable box checked, you don't even see it in the device manager anymore. You also got typical power options, and uh, security options uh, for the fingerprint scanner. If you look down here in the tray bar, the uh, motion computing dashboard actually runs all the time. Uh, and because there's no hard drive access indicator on the computer's hardware anywhere, uh, it'll actually flicker yellow, the icon, when it's accessing the hard drive. You can turn that feature off. And you can also enable uh, automatic display rotation. It actually has inside of it uh, an accelerometer feature. And this allows it to uh, selectively rotate the screen's orientation based on the physical orientation of the unit. Now let's take a look at the hardware keys. These are pretty straightforward by default, uh, and I actually like the default configuration. You know, up, down, left, right are always up, down, left, right, and they'll map to the orientation of the screen too, which is nice. This key up here will, uh, by default, launch the uh, motion dashboard. This is the function key, so if you press function key and then A, that'll rotate the screen, and then function key plus B activates the, the escape key. The unit also has a number of uh, fun uh, gimmick features. Uh, the fingerprint scanner is kind of cool. Um, that's, that's actually uh, useful in many cases, I've found. Uh, this key here is your Control-Alt-Delete, and then this here activates the uh, camera application, which is kind of nifty. It'll give you this please wait message, and then a uh, preview there of what the camera sees uh, behind the computer. Now you can see one of the design flaws in this and that is uh, the lanyard from the stylus tends to get in the way. Uh, it also times out the camera application really quickly and another actually pretty cool feature that this has is the uh, ability to swap batteries without shutting the whole computer down. So if I go into standby here you can actually remove the battery and it will uh, continue to run in standby mode for a brief period of time. While we're down there, let's take a look at what's under the battery. You got your uh, COA for Windows 7 Pro, which is interesting because these actually came with um, XP. If you look over here, there's actually a curious little port well, with connections inside of it. I do not know what those are or what might plug into those. Since we got the battery out, we may as well uh, talk about that right now. Uh, battery life is pretty good. You know, it's what you'd expect for uh, something like this. Uh, it's neither fantastic nor terrible. It lasts around two and a half to three hours, I'd say. Anyway, now, pros and cons. Uh, we'll start with uh, things that are good about this, that I like about this computer. Uh, number one, nice screen. It's a great 10-inch uh, screen, perfect resolution for the screen. You know, it, it just looks really crisp, really nice, uh, great contrast ratio, uh, which is, you know, definitely better than 
the netbook that I have. The unit has decent performance for what it is. You know, it's a it's a low clocked Core 2 Duo, but it's still a Core 2 Duo. It'll get the job done. You can play a high definition flash video without any problems, and you can uh, easily burn through any uh, local high definition video that you have saved. You know, it's an only Intel graphics, so you're not going to be gaming on it, but it's still a pretty good set of features for what it is. It's also a pretty durable unit. You know, it's meant to be. Uh, Somewhat uh, kind of dust proof, splash proof, you know, uh, kind of everything proof, you know, take it with, uh, and, you know, you don't have to tiptoe around it. Uh, I like that it has the fingerprint scanner, that's kind of handy. Uh, it's nice that the built in wireless card does have uh, built in Bluetooth. And you got to give them credit for some of the cool gimmick features that they put on there, like the camera and the RFID reader and the optional barcode scanner. It's also a great unit because it, uh, it's just really quiet when it runs even under a full load you know with the fan on full blast it's not a loud system by any means all right cons because of the uh, nature of this there is an inherent lack of upgradability you notice there are no panels on the bottom here you can unscrew in order to upgrade the hard drive memory and that kind of stuff and that's because there aren't any there's also an inherent lack of ports uh, the lack of a USB port and headphone jack were definitely uh, disappointing to me. Uh, that little speaker we went, talked about earlier, it's uh, very small, very quiet, uh, not good. And uh, one other thing that I didn't go over in this video today here is the docking station. The docking station does uh, provide uh, some of the lost functionality. It does give you, I believe, three USB ports, an Ethernet jack, a VGA port. It also comes with a... a power adapter port. One feature that, uh, you know, that's a nice feature for the quietness but hurts the performance is that iPod hard drive. While it is uh, quiet and uh, durable, it is also a little bit slower than its uh, counterparts. And lastly, there is uh, no hardware keyboard on here. Uh, typing using the on-screen keyboard is extremely slow. I averaged around 20 words per minute and I can pull off about 70 words per minute on a real keyboard. So there, if you're planning on doing any typing or uh, audio multimedia of any kind, this is not a good system for you. But if you can appreciate a quiet computer with decent performance, battery life, that doesn't have a lot of moving parts. It's actually a pretty nifty little machine. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Be sure to stay tuned uh, to the all new channel 2012 for the latest in reviews, guides, food, computers, general around the house, and other uh, high quality, high definition uploads. Thanks for watching.